let's say I have a sign up form here for creating a new user model and I have some validations on the user model. So if I click on sign up here without filling anything in, I get a number of validation errors. But let's say I want these error message, messages to show in line as I'm filling out the form next to the form fields instead of requiring the user to click and submit the form to see the error messages. Well, we can do this with JavaScript by hand, but it's quite a bit of work, especially if we have some complex validations. Well, it just so happens that there's a nice gem available called client-side validations, which does exactly this. It basically takes the model validations and translates them into JavaScript code so they're available in line on the client side as the user's filling out the form. Now, the only requirement, though, is that you're using jQuery. So if you're using prototype, you might need to find another solution. But we're using jQuery here in our app, so let's give this a try. The first step is to go to your gem file and add the client side validations gem here. And notice I've already set up jQuery using the jQuery Rails gem, which I'll link to in the show notes. And then run the bundle command to install the gem. And then we have to run the generator that the gem provides. So we can do that with Rails G client side validations install. And that just generates a couple files that is required for the gem. Uh, one is a configuration file under the initializers directory, and another is the JavaScript file, uh, which we'll need to include in our layout. So let's do that first. In the layout file, after jQuery is included, we'll just include the Rails validations uh, JavaScript file. Now let's also check out the initializer file that was generated. Notice that it has support for simple form and formtastic. So if you're using one of those, you don't have to do anything extra here. But if you aren't using those, you'll need to do a little more work in order to get the error messages to show up in line next to each text field. So what we have to do is uncomment this area here to override field error proc. And basically what this will do is if there's an error message, it'll append a label message tag here and with the error message content. This will basically just show the error message in line next to each form field. And you can customize this to your heart's content if you want, if you wanted something different other than a label tag, for example, here. Now there's one more step, and that is to go to your form where you have a form for call and add the validate equals true option. And there we go. That's all that's needed to get the validations to show up in line here. All right, so let's try this out. On my sign up form here, you can see if I tab out of the first username field here, it now says can be blank in line immediately after I tab out. Pretty nice. Now what about some more complex validation scenarios? As you can see here, I have in my user model, I have some other validations such as the format of the username to make sure that it doesn't have any strange characters. And I also validate the length of the password and that the confirmation for the password matches. And all these validations, well, they just work. Or they're just all translated automatically for us so that we don't have to worry about translating them to JavaScript. So you can see the length of the password, the confirmation, and there it matches. Everything's valid, so I should be able to sign up with no problem, and it works. Now what about validations which are dependent upon information that's inside our database, such as a validates the uniqueness of, maybe we want our username and our email address to actually be unique. Well, that all works out of the box too. You can see if I try typing in the same username again, it now says it has already been taken because it actually does an Ajax request to the server to double check if the username is unique. And if it's not, it just displays the validation error message. It's really nice. Now, what about styling? You'll likely want to customize the way these error messages look. So what kind of CSS is necessary for that? Well, first of all, I like to customize the field with errors div in my CSS and always make it be displayed in line. This is just something I like to set up in every Rails application by default. And for the actual label itself, the error message itself, it's under a label tag with a class of message. So we can customize it like this and maybe give it a color of red. And how about we give it some left padding of five pixels and change the font size to how about 12 pixels. So we can give this a try here on the sign up form and there's our new styling, looks quite a bit nicer. Now what if we want to create our own custom validations with some complex logic like I showed in episode number 211 where I created this custom class called email format validator and use that for the validations. 
how might we go about translating this Ruby code into the JavaScript? Well, thankfully, there's a wiki page showing you exactly how to do this, to create a custom validator and to hook it into the JavaScript code and to translate that logic into JavaScript. Let me show you how to do it here. First of all, I'll quickly create a custom validator like I showed in episode number 211 by creating a new file here in the lib directory called email format validator rb. And in here, I'll just paste in some code to make a custom validator class. Basically, it just checks that the email's value matches a given regular expression. And then if it doesn't, it adds an error message. Now you could use, you know, just a simple validates format of for this kind of behavior, but here we have the option to do more complex logic if we want. Now files in the lib directory aren't automatically included in Rails 3. So if you haven't already, go to your application.rb config file and add the lib directory to your load paths just like this. Now when you're making a custom validator like this, you need to specify the default error message inside your locales file. So in the English locales file here, we can just say uh, the errors, messages, and then specify the email format, and then set it to whatever we want. So in this case, I'll say it's not formatted properly. There we go. And so now we just have to go into our user model and add this custom validator inside of here. So we can do that with a call to validates and then give it the attribute name such as email and then the name of the validator such as email format and just say true. You can also pass in a hash of options in here such as you know specify a custom error message but here I'll just leave it at its defaults and just say true. So with this in place if we tried to go to our form and try typing in an invalid email address and click sign up then it gives an error message says email is not formatted properly, but we want to do this in line instead of displaying the error message uh, when the user clicks the form. So what we need to do is translate this custom validator into JavaScript. So we can create a new JavaScript file here. I'll just call it railsvalidations.custom because that's the convention that the plugin uses. Create this new JavaScript file. So I'll just paste in some code for this. Uh, here's what that validator might look like. Notice we call client-side validations. And then we call validators and add a local validation. You can also add a remote validation, which means it's going to contact the server, such as in the case of the validates uniqueness of. But here we can handle it all locally with some uh, JavaScript code here just to do the same comparison of the regular expression and then return the error message if it doesn't match. And then finally, inside our application layout file, I just need to include that custom JavaScript file we just made rails.validations.custom. So now we can try this out, going to our signup form and entering an invalid email address, and immediately as we tab away, it just displays our error message because it's handling it through JavaScript. But if we didn't have JavaScript enabled and try to submit our form, it would fall back to our Ruby implementation. Pretty nice. Now these custom validations may have seemed like a lot of work, but once you get this system in place, then it's pretty easy to just add further custom validations by just adding more classes. Well, that's it for this episode on client-side validations. I think getting that instant feedback as a user's filling out the form makes for a much nicer user experience.